What's up guys, Brandon Johnson here again and thanks for joining me. Today we're taking a look at the classic old time tune, Wildwood Flower. Now this is one of those tunes where it, there's really beauty in the simplicity of a song like this. The chords are fairly simple, C, G, F, but the beauty of it is in the performance and in this light-hearted melody that is played over these chords. But today we're going to be looking at kind of the Tony Rice version which is based on kind of the old original version of this song, but there's just a few more passing chords and a little bit of Tony Rice-ism, some pull-offs, some hammer-ons. So this song's played capo four out of the C position, which is gonna put us in the key of E. So I hope you enjoy this one, and let's check it out. Okay, let's check out Wildwood Flower now. So we're looking at measure number one, and you'll notice there's a pickup measure here. It's a two note pickup. Now we've got our capo on the fourth fret. So we're gonna be playing out of the C position. And that's gonna put us in the key of E. So we're gonna start out with that two note pickup, and I like to play that on two down strokes. Right, so we're just playing the 2nd fret D to the 3rd fret D from our middle finger to our ring finger. And then at the beginning of measure number 1, we're going to hit kind of the higher register of that C major chord. And that's going to be an open G and a 1st fret B together. Those are going to be three downstrokes in a row. And right when we reach that open G to first fret B at the beginning of measure number one, we're going to play a hammer on from the open G to the second fret G. Now you'll notice here I'm actually playing the first fret B when I do this hammer on with my middle finger. So it's really just the middle finger that's doing the hammer on. The first fret B is planted. Okay, and then there's that first fret B on a downstroke. And that hammer on is going to land on the second quarter note. Okay, and then there's another hammer on there. And this time we're going to do a hammer on on the open D to second fret D. Kind of the same feel with your left hand. Instead of playing the open G to second fret G hammer on, we're just going to play that open D to second fret D hammer on. Now you'll notice that I'm still planting my index finger on that first fret B, even though on the second hammer on we're not playing that actual first fret B note. But for me it just helps to actually plant my finger there while I'm playing this whole part. Okay, and then right at the end we're going to have basically the reverse of what we had in the pickup. So we're going to play third fret D, to second fret D. Okay, and that's going to lead us into measure number two. Okay, looking at measure number two now, the first thing you're going to notice here is that measure number two is a measure of six. So there's actually gonna be six quarter notes in measure number two. And that's one of the classic features of Wildwood Flower is it has, you know, kind of that, those extra two notes at the end of every other measure in the A part. So right at the beginning of measure number two, we're gonna land on an open D and open G. And this is essentially part of the G chord here. So we're gonna start on a downstroke again with that open D to open G. And then on the second quarter note, we're going to do a pull-off. So remember before, in the previous measure, we were doing hammer-ons. Now we're going to do kind of like a Tony Rice signature pull-off here. Okay, and that's a pull-off from the second fret D to the open D. And you're kind of catching that open G, too, underneath it.
Okay, so in a way, this is kind of like cross-picking, even though it's, it's a lead part, you know, we're really kind of cross-picking out this C major chord here. Okay, we're gonna play that second fret to third fret A. And then we're gonna play the open G to first fret B. Remember, we're still planted here with our index finger. We're planted on that first fret B string, playing out of the C chord position. Okay, so what you're going to see after that, after that kind of open G to first fret B, is a third fret low E. Now, the way to think about this third fret low E is that that's going to be actually the alternating bass note of the C chord, the C major chord, right? So you're holding that C major chord shape. You're just going to take your ring finger and place it on the third fret E, and then take your little finger and place it on that third fret A. And that's going to give you that kind of C major with that low E bass note. And if you listen to, you know, Tone Poems, which is the Tony Rice, David Grisman album, they have a great version of Wildwood Flower. And right at the beginning there, you'll hear Tony Rice just pluck out this exact chord shape. And it's just a nice full way to play a C major chord. And that's what we're doing here with this third fret low E. Right, so you'll notice there that I went from that open G to first fret B, and then with my ring finger, I planted it on the third fret low E, and then just cross-picked out the rest of that C major chord. Okay, and then right after that cross-picked C major chord there, we're gonna come back to the third fret A on a downstroke. And since we're already playing this kind of modified C major chord position with that, that bass note on that third fret E, we don't have to actually change our fingering on our left hand here. We can just simply pluck the third fret A, which is already down, right? So we have that third fret A with our little finger. And then we're gonna go back to that open G to first fret B which is just kind of the higher register of the C major chord. And then right at the end, we have the same pickup that we had at the beginning of measure number one, which is gonna lead us back into basically the same phrase in measure number three. So keep in mind that measure, measure number two, is a six count. So now let's play measures one and two with the pickup all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, so we're looking at measure number three now, and what you'll notice about this song is that the melody kind of repeats twice in the A part. And if you listen to, you know, the Carter family, the original version of this song, or one of the oldest versions of this song, you'll notice that they kind of play the melody the same way twice. And the reason I didn't just put a repeat sign at the end of measure number two is because I wanted to kind of capture a little bit of the nuance of Tony Rice's version of this. And, you know, one thing he likes to do in some of his songs when he's in the C position is he likes to jump to that F chord, kind of as a passing chord. And in measure number one, we have C for the entire measure. And similarly, in measure number three, this could also be C for the entire measure. But what we're going to do here is we're going to play kind of a cool little F passing chord here in the middle of measure number three. So we're going to start out much like we did in measure number one with a downstroke on that open G and first fret B. So we're just planting our index finger on that first fret B, kind of playing out of the C major chord position. And then you're going to see an upstroke on that same little two note chord. 
and then a hammer on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically hammer on to an F chord. So that F chord, we're going to be going from the open G to first fret B. And then a downstroke hammer on on the F chord. So we've got our C chord position. And hammering on with our F chord position. So the F chord there is the third fret D, second fret G, and first fret B. And really all we need to do here, we're still going to plant on that first fret B, and that's really our anchor point. And we're just going to take our C major chord shape here and just hammer on to an F. Okay, and then you'll notice that first fret B there on an upstroke, and that's kind of the end of that little phrase at the beginning here of measure number three. And right after that, we're gonna come right back to that C again with a hammer on from the open D to the second fret D, and we're gonna let that G ring out again. So you'll notice some commonalities here between the first half and the second half of the A part. So really all you have to think about here, you don't have to really think about the individual notes so much as the chord shapes. So it's easier just to kind of hammer on with that F chord shape, even though you'll notice here that I have my ring finger on that third fret A, even though we're really not even playing that, I just do that because that's the F chord shape and it's easy for me to hammer on with that F chord shape. And you may actually find that you do hit that, that a string on that F, and that's fine too. And then at the end, of course, we're going to have kind of that reverse, um, you know, that reverse pickup from the third fret D to second fret D. It's kind of a walk down. Okay, and that's going to lead us into measure number four. Okay, so when we look at measure number four now, measure number four and measure number two are actually identical. So we can just kind of plug in what we already learned at the end here of part A or in measure number four. Again, it's going to be a measure of six over the G and then a hammer on with our middle finger. Now the only thing that's different here is right at the end, instead of a walk up, right, in measure number two we went and in measure number four, we just have an open G. And that's because that open G is going to lead into the B part, which has a slightly different melody to it. All right, let's look at all of part A now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that's going to lead us into part B. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. 